One of the issues that we really need to pay attention to during times of severe drought is nitrate accumulation in plants and nitrate toxicity in the animals utilizing those plants, especially the ruminant animals utilizing those plants. Nitrate utilization by plants is a normal biological process. Plants, under normal circumstances, take up nit nitrates from the soil, convert them into nitrite, further convert them into ammonia, and then incorporate that ammonia into plant protein. So that is a normal biological process uh, that happens all the time. Similarly, ruminant animals are always exposed to some level of nitrate. In the rumen, the same process that happens in the plant occurs. Nitrate is converted to nitrite, nitrite is converted to ammonia, and then that ammonia is incorporated into the microbial cells, which the animal can utilize as a, as a protein source. So animals and plants are dealing with nitrates all the time. The issue and the, and the time that we want to be especially careful is when the plant is stressed, especially during times of drought. The reason that we have to be careful of that is because the roots will continue to take up nitrate as they normally would, but the plant is limited in its ability to grow and convert that nitrate into protein because it's limited in water or it has some other stress uh, associated with it. During those times, nitrates will accumulate, especially in the bottom portion of the plant. And if we feed that to the animal, uh, the animal will not be able to convert, fully convert the nitrate into ammonia. In fact, it's the step where nitrate is converted into nitrite, but then nitrite cannot be converted into ammonia that causes us problems. At, during those times, we have a buildup of nitrite in the rumen, which gets absorbed into the blood and affects the, the animal's ability to carry oxygen. That's because uh, nitrite converts hemoglobin into methemoglobin. And so you have a blood which is not red and rich in oxygen, but rather it's a chocolatey, syrupy brown and deficient in oxygen. If this per persists for any period of time, in fact, within a matter of hours, the animal will asphyxiate and die. So we need to be aware of this and we need to have some management strategies in place uh, in case we're dealing with forages that are high in nitrate. Single most important thing that we can do is, is test our forages for nitrate level. It's a relatively inexpensive test. Uh, 12 to $15 should get you a nitrate level. And then we want to have some guidelines in terms of strategy of what we're going to do with that forage if nitrate comes back high. Some good guidelines are if it's less than 0.15% nitrate, uh, you're probably okay. There's probably no problem with that forage. 0.15 to 0.3 we probably want to limit that forage to no more than 50% of what the animal is eating. 0.3 to 0.45, we probably want to limit that forage to no more than 25% uh, of what the animal is eating. Once you get into levels of 0.45 or more, uh, we probably would want you to work with a, with a specialist or a veterinarian to make sure that that uh, forage is being properly diluted uh, so that you don't have a hot spot and, and create problems. So those are some guidelines in terms of nitrates. Other things that we can do uh, when we're harvesting, if we're dealing with harvested forages, since nitrates accumulate in the bottom portion of the stock, when we're harvesting, we can raise our cutting head and leave the, the nitrate in the bottom portion of the stock in the field. Another thing that we can do in, in uh, again, in harvested forages is we can opt to turn it into silage rather than into hay. Uh, during the fermentation process, 40 to 60% of the nitrate in that silage pile will be uh, converted to ammonia uh, and probably incorporated into, into bacterial cells in the silage. Um, and so the fermentation process is a good way to reduce the nitrate level that the animal uh, that the animal's dealing with. Uh, in grazing animals, uh, we can limit the exposure uh, to the fields that are high in nitrate. If we do that, uh, that Ruminants do have the ability to change their microbial populations and be able to deal with more nitrate. And so we want to limit the amount of time and then slowly increase that amount of time so that we're adapting those rumen microbes to a higher nitrate. Again, we would want you to do that in, in cooperation with a specialist. During those times, the, the thing that limits the conversion of nitrite into ammonia is energy in the rumen. And so another strategy might be to provide supplemental energy for example, corn, if we have no choice but to use high nitrate forages or graze high nitrate forages, providing them supplemental energy 
uh, will help in that conversion of nitrite to ammonia. Several, lots of, of uh, forage species and weeds are known to accumulate nitrates, so especially if you're dealing with forages in the sorghum family, uh, so forage sorghum, sorghum sedan grass. In the southern part of the United States, Johnson grass is known to accumulate. Corn can accumulate nitrates. Uh, and then there's many weeds, a whole variety of weeds, pigweed, uh, thistle, kochia, all of those are known to accumulate nitrates. Again, the most important thing that we can do is to test our forages uh, so that you know where you're at and if you need help, ask for help from a specialist.